What's going on everybody, my name is Mana Tubi, coach of the Tampa Bay Lux Rays, and today I'm bringing you guys our Week 9 match versus Shadow Gaming Hub, coach of the Osaka Eevees. His YouTube and Twitter will be in the description below, as well as the rest of the coaches for Division 2. Now, like I said in my team builder, this is an extremely important match, because if we win one of our next three matches, then we are 100% guaranteed second place overall in Division 2, and we uh, guarantee our spot into Division 1 next season. Still working for that title. Uh, which will likely be determined by our match next week versus Ellie, but we have this match going on week 9, and I have an entire de uh, team builder dedicated to my team, however, I'm bringing our Substitute Drain Punch, Mega Low Punny, our Speedy-ish kind of Fizz Def Zapdos, our Mixed Defensive Jellicent, our Choice Banded Tyranitar, our Sex Whimsicott, and our uh, Shed Shell Offensive Nidoqueen. Now, when you look at his team, he does not have the Gothitelle, so the Shed Shell is a little bit of a waste, uh, but that's not a huge issue. We, um, you know, we didn't over-prep for it. We, I feel like we prepped just as much as I needed to. He brought the Rotom Heat, the Sharpedo, which I knew was coming, the Nidu King, the Hitmontop, the Mega Sableye, and the Jirachi. So, uh, looking at his team, I know uh, the Sharpedo is going to be an issue. I have to keep my checks to that healthy, my checks being my Whimsicott, Zapdos, and my Low Punny, otherwise they can potentially Oko everything else. Um, the Nido King is going to be a bit of an issue, but again, I do have my Jellison that can take on pretty much any set, unless he is Physical Life Orb. Uh, the Hitmontop is stopped relatively decently by my Jellison, and the sub Drain Punch Return Mega Low Punny that I have is going to put in a decent amount of work, at least from what I can tell, because, uh, again, setting up a sub versus this team is very nice. He can't break it with Jirachi's U-turn. If he, even if he's offensive, he'd have to break it with a Zen Headbutt or an Iron Head, and then I get a free Baton Pass out into my Zapdos. Um, so that is what I'm thinking pre-game. So real quick, let's get into the match. Now, oh, I believe I need to slow this down a little bit. Yep, to normal. So I'm going to lead with my Zapdos just because it has a decent lead versus his team. As he is not going to go for a non-attacking move because um, he would have gotten, he would have had Prankster, he would have gone first, and I'm able to get off a of Volt Switch. So I know he's not going for a Willow us 100%, unless he stall for whatever reason. So I'm going to go out into my Mega Low Punny as he does just go right for the knockoff. So now uh, he is going to switch out, not wanting to take a scrappy hit as he goes out and do his hit on top. As I set up a sub, and you'll notice this thing does not have Intimidate. So I'm actually free to just start firing off Drain Punches, getting my health back uh, so that I can take on the Sharpedo better. As he actually sets up a sub of his own, and I was a little bit confused as to why he did this. Like, I was not entirely sure uh, what he was doing here. But I'm going to go for another Drain Punch, drink, uh, break the sub, as he reveals the bulk up, which I thought was very interesting. And now I'm going to fire off another Drain Punch, again, just leaving myself at a good amount of HP to deal with the... Um, the Mega Sharpedo because I need this thing healthy for that. He's going to set up another bulk up. Uh, again, not entirely sure why. And he is going to then go for the Sucker Punch, which is going to break my sub. Uh, but I basically was able to kill this hit on top for free. Uh, his hazard removal is gone, um, even though he does have, of course, the Mega Sableye. Um, but here, he's going to send out his Rotom. And I'm going to go out into my Zapdos, thinking he may want to go for a will o Volt Switch or Overheat. Uh, didn't want to go right out into my Nato Queen in case he did go right for that. Overheat would like it a little bit healthy now. Um, so that I can deal with the Mega Sableye later on, but I am now going to Volt Switch out into my Tyranitar. If he burns me again, then okay, good play, but I don't think he's going to. He's going to go for the Volt Switch, um, and he is going to send out his Mega Sableye. Now, I am Choice Banded, ladies and gentlemen, so I'm just going to go for the Stone Edge, and that crit did not matter. It mattered in the sense that um, he doesn't know what type of Tyranitar I am, but uh, Stone Edge was a guaranteed one-hit KO as long as I connected, and I did. So the crit did not matter in that aspect, but he does not know that I am Joe's Banded now. For all he knows, I could be Scar for Assault Vest, and I just happened to get a crit, so he knocked out. But again, Stone Edge was a guaranteed KO. So now, he's going to go out and do his Nidoking. King. I'm not trying to take an Earth Power or anything like that. So he actually reveals the Earthquake, which I am able to take relatively well. Not great, but judging by that damage, I'm thinking Scarf, because you typically usually see Nidoking King either Scarf or Life Orb. Uh, but here, I'm going to pull a double out uh, into my Zapdos, predicting this switch very nicely. Um, which, um, you know, it is good, and I can fire off a Heat Wave. It does decent damage to the Jirachi. He's going to set up his Stealth Rocks. I have no hazard removal, so this is a decent play on his part. And now, I have to keep my Zapdos healthy, because again, that Sharpedo is still a very big threat. So right now, I am just going to go right for the Roost, make sure that I can take a Life Orb Waterfall after Stealth Rock, guaranteed, even after the burn. 
I can definitely take a waterfall. So here, I know I'm faster than this because it revealed to be defensive. I'm going to go for the Volt Switch, and I'm going to hard switch out into my Nidu Queen, as this time he decides to go for the Overheat, which does a good chunk of damage. But uh, with my bulk investment with Nidu Queen's natural bulk, I am able to live, and I can take another Overheat, which means I can now fire off a Sludge Wave. However, he makes a good play, switches out into his Jirachi. However, uh, oddly enough, I outspeed him. Now, I don't think I was running enough EVs to outspeed an uninvested Jirachi, so I don't know if, like, if you have to run Drain Punch, you have to run a separate nature for it, but uh, I'm able to outspeed him, get up my rocks, and then knock him out with the Earth Power afterwards, uh, which is awesome. The crit also, I believe, did not matter. I am Modest Max Special Attack, and he was physically defensive for, uh, to take on my Mega Low Punny a little bit better, not specially defensive, so I don't think the crit mattered. Uh, if anyone wants to run a Calc, uh, then feel free to. Also, he went for Drain Punch, predicting my Tyranitar to want to come out, which wasn't a terrible play, uh, but he definitely should have attacked what was in front of him, because Nidoqueen Queen uh, was a big threat to his team, and the Jirachi was also a very big threat to my team. Um, but anyway, he's going to go out into Nidoking. King. I can't switch into this super safely now. Uh, if he went for Earthquake, that would have been really bad. So I'm going to go out, or I'm going to sack my Nidoqueen, Queen, and then I'm going to get the free switch out into Jellison. He is now going to switch out into his Rodent Heat, and I actually go for the Recover here aside um, instead of going for the Scald. Uh, I don't think that was a bad play on my part. I essentially wanted it to be full health because I could potentially take a Crunch from the Mega Sharpedo, or from the regular Sharpedo, after Stealth Rock switching in again, just because he may have been mixed offensive with HP Fire to hit my Ferrothorn, which of course I did not bring. Um, so that's why I did that, and then I'm going to switch out. Uh, he has no reason not to Volt Switch, but I don't need my Tyranitar for too much at this point. The Nidoking outspeeds me. I can hit this, sure, but I have other ways to deal with this Rotom Heat, and the Sharpedo Oko's it from this range anyway. So he's going to go out into his Nidoking and just hit me with an Earthquake, which is totally fine, because I can now go out into my Whimsicott, and he's not going to want to switch out into his, um, his Sharpedo on a Whimsicott, obviously. The Sharpedo is his win condition, so I'm just going to go right for a Psychic, and I'm going to clean knock him out, which is great because uh, Rotom Heat could have been a little bit annoying if it got a pain split on anything. But now, he's going to go out into his Nidoking, and I'm fully expecting to take a Scarfed Poison Jab right now. However, if he does that, he goes for the Poison Jab. He's Sheer Force, he cannot poison my Jellicent. I switch into my Jellicent afterwards, click Will-O-Wisp, and the potential Sharpedo switch in, and I say potential, I mean the more than likely Sharpedo switch in, is neutralized. Uh, meaning that my shark, my Jellison can definitely take a hit Whimsicott easily, Zapdos, Mega Low Punny, etc. So that is a threat that is severely weakened, and I can even proceed to recover Stall it if I have to, uh, as long as it has Life Orb. Uh, so I'm fully expecting to take the Poison Jab. I'm fine with letting my Whimsicott go down, but he actually goes for the Earthquake, predicting something else to want to come in, potentially my Jellison to try and to a KO it. And I stay in and just knock him out with the Spec Psychic, which is great for me. Uh, because now he is just left with the Sharpedo, so now I uh, I pretty much have to sack something. I'm going to sack off my Jellicent, not doing a ton for the rest of this match. Obviously, he just has the Sharpedo left. Can potentially live a Crunch here, uh, which I know he's going to have. He is going to go for the Crunch, and I just straight go down. So that reveals to me that he's uh, max attack, essentially. Max attack Adam into Fear Jolly. I don't believe it killed. If he needed to be close to like max attack in order to kill me, that might have even been a roll. Uh, but... Either way, he is going to knock me out, not a huge deal, because now I can just go out into my Mega Low Punny and just knock this thing out with a Drain Punch. Uh, he's going to go for Protect, so if I had sub there, that would have been even better for me, but uh, not an issue, because I will be able to take the next hit, even if he has Zen Headbutt, I can live it. He goes for the Waterfall, and flinch. I flinch. And uh, I can't, I can't switch anything else in at the moment because differential. So basically, um, because of a waterfall flinch, a 20% chance, uh, Low Punny is going to get its first death of the season. He's going to go for Crunch. That's easily enough to knock me out. And now, all I have is my Zapdos left. I can live one waterfall. If I get flinched, I lose. Now. Colton, in his previous matches this season, was able to uh, pair Hex Paul to death, and then win from there. And he, I believe, got a very crucial crit near the end of the match with him and Ellie, and he was able to win 1-0 there. So, 
he beat the number three team largely due to hacks. He beat the number two team largely due to hacks. Can he beat the number one team due to hacks? No, he cannot. Zapdos breaks through, and we are left with a 2-0 victory. A very, very tense, very nerve-wracking 2-0 victory. Uh, so, while I'm still kind of upset that uh, Mega Little Pony had to get its first death, it is now 19 and 1, should be 20 and 0, but it does not get its first death of the season. We we do win, and so we are 100% guaranteed for Division 1 next season. Nobody can catch up to us at this point. Paul, who is in, I believe, third place, has three total losses. We have zero. We only have two more matches to play. We could lose the next two matches 6-0 each, and we would still be going to Division 1 no matter what. So that's super exciting. Not that I plan to lose my next two matches uh, 6-0. Coming for you, Ellie. Uh, but we are able to achieve victory here, despite the fact that he had... Uh, the ridiculous Mega Sableye Gothitelle thing that I had to prep for, despite the fact that he picked up Sharpedo just to destroy my team, uh, we were able to come through, and we were able to win, and that is amazing. So, thank you guys very much for watching. I'm still super happy. Um, next week, next week pretty much determines the championship because next week we're in going up against the Accrington Accring Accring. The Acorn, Accrington Stanler, uh, coached by uh, 8 bit Insomniac Ellie, and she is six and uh, she is seven and one, I believe, right now. I'm not entirely sure if she's played Paul yet, but she is one spot below us. So we definitely need to win there. So thank you guys very much for watching, and I will see you next week.